It's the 24th of October today, exactly two weeks away from the end of the month of October. Christmas will soon be here. As a business, these are some questions for you to chew on. Have you started planning to take advantage of the season of the Yuletide? Have you thought of having any sort of promotional sales for your business? Have you thought of any sort of increased advertising or strategy to push out the remainder of your stock before the end of the year? Even more importantly, have you started planning for the year 2019? Have you started budgeting? Have you even thought of what plans to make to be able to put your business on the right track once the year starts in 2019? Well, if you haven't thought of any of these things, reminding you to start planning for the end of the year and also for the year that's coming in 2019, this is a time to start so that you can sort of stay ahead of the competition. And this is our prayer, as always has been on this show, that God bless our homeland, Ghana, and definitely make our nation great and strong. And on this note, we welcome all of you once again to your favorite business development program on radio, Masterclass. Just to let you know that Masterclass is powered by Joy Business. And this program airs every Wednesday, right from 1.15 p.m. or through to 2 p.m. here on your superstation, Joy 99.7. My name is Yabana and I'm the host for the show. So going straight to our discussion, in this month of October, we have been discussing the all-important topic of public relations and your business. What is public relations? We've, we have done a recap in, in, in previous sessions. Today, we'll maybe we'll just touch on what PR is and what PR is not. We may not spend too much time going over all that we've talked about. And we've been talking about what kind of legitimacy. Last week, we looked at the various stakeholders that a business has and what kind of legitimacy that these people have over your business. And so we, you know, we looked at your enabling stakeholders. We also looked at your normative stakeholders and we looked at your diffused stakeholders. Essentially, your, your examples of some of these people, your stakeholders of the first category, which is your enabling stakeholders, are your regulators. Which industry do you work in? Your employees, your customers, your vendors, and the general public. And then we also looked at your diffuse stakeholders, people who sort of affect your business but do not have a direct legitimacy over your business, either to shut it down or otherwise, but can still affect your business. Again, some of these people, examples of this group are your community, your, your region, or your country, the family, your friends, or your or family and friends of employees, and the family and friends of your customers, and of course, special interest groups. Then the final group we looked at was your normative stakeholders, which is either your competitors or the association or the group to which you belong. I'm getting a nod from my resource person, so yes, I'm doing well. Today, we want to move into another discussion on PR, and that discussion is going to center around media relations and PR. And publicity. Media relations and publicity. Yes. Okay, media relations and publicity. So keep your, your dial locked right here. Do not change that dial. Just make sure that you're part of today's discussion so that you can contribute to it. There's so much happening in our country today that requires the intervention of PR and perhaps learning from some of these experiences, you can make your business better. We're always privileged to have with us back in the studio the co-founder of Mahogany Consult and a lecturer as well in the person of AC Isman Johnson, Isi, it's always a pleasure to have you back in the studio. Yes, it's also a pleasure to be here. Great, Thank you. Great, great, great. So, um, what's trending in the world of PR? Well, before we go into today, what's trending? <laughs> I, I, I think that for our conversation today, media mm -hmm. relations and publicity, um, still what's happening in the banking, um, in the banking sector, especially with the liquidity challenges, still mm -hmm. remains an issue. Right. Um, but I think at the moment. The issue with KNUSD is trending, and sometime in the conversation, we'll see how mm. media relations and publicity is at play in what's happening. Uh, it's interesting you talk about KNUSD because I've actually made it a case study at some point in our discussion. I think it's the most talked about topic in the last couple of days. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So today we talk about media relations and publicity and how it can interface your business to help your business become great. Yes. Right. Just a sort of um, intro into today's discussion. Can you just give us a quick outlook into today's discussion? Well, um, so the media, both the personnel and the channels, I mean, offer an amazing opportunity for us to interface with our customers, with our employees, with, with, with um, all levels of stakeholders. And we've learned also that through media channels, we're able to shape the perception people have of us. And you ended on talking about our um, diffuse stakeholders. These are groups of people an organization rarely interacts with. And so how do they get to understand your organization? How do they know about what you're doing through mass media communication channels? Right. So today's discussion promises to be really exciting. exciting. Time check in the studio, 20 minute, 22 minutes past the hour of one, I beg your pardon. We want to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we continue with today's discussion. We'll take a break now.
That was the Daughters of Glorious Jesus with Bibri Nawayama Afimu. Truly thankful to God indeed, and that's what we should be as well, seeing that we've come to the 10th month of the year. Today we continue our discussion. If you just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation, and we're discussing media relations and publicity right here on your Superstation. Keep the dialogue here. Be a part of this discussion. While we go on with the discussion, if you've got any thoughts or any questions or any thing you want to share with us you can send your thoughts to us on 0244-340-437 that's 0244-340-437 sometime in the show we will be opening the phone line so that you can join us also by telephone if you wish to do that the numbers to send your comments to again are 0244-340-437 now Isi, let's talk about media relations and public and, and publicity yes take yes. it take it away so um you know media relations i think it's one of the commonest synonyms that people use for public relations. And this is because um, the output or the end result of much of public relations work um, are new stories have to do with, 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 with the media. Okay, If you recall at the beginning when we were looking at some of the misconceptions about PR, we noted that some people think that PR is all about getting a new story about your organization in the newspapers or in any other form of media. And, and they are right, but of course we've learned that PR is more than that. Actually, PR people rely on the media to get news and information about their organizations to the public. And vice versa, the media also rely on PR uh, people for news. Um, a PR manager might write the story and pitch it to the media or share it and or sometimes invites the media to um, cover an event. We've already, before we had the music, um, I was talking about how we use the media um, to reach out to our diffuse stakeholders. But even when it comes to communication between an organization and its key stakeholders, for example, your enablers, customers, employees, vendors, sometimes it's important to use some of these mass media communication channels when you first of all exhausted all the internal, personal and direct channels and this is because sometimes these stakeholders are widely dispersed i mean if you take customers of an organization they could be all over the country they could be um even in another country okay so the media then become um a very powerful tool to 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 reach out to them so when i keep saying the media who am i referring to in public relations we're looking at the media in two levels first the personnel and here I'm referring to the journalists or the reporters or the editors, and then the channel or the medium, which then refers to, we have traditional media and social media. I think in this conversation, we will stay away from social media. You've had a very lengthy chat about that already. And so looking at traditional media, we're looking at television, we're looking at radio, newspapers, um, magazines, and recently online um, news portals as well. And I would like to start with looking at the media personnel. Now, there's a popular theory in journalism which says that the media are gender setters. And that the media, so another way to say that the media sets the agenda. And what does this mean? It says the media raise issues that they and their audiences, who are, by the way, stakeholders of an organization, consider to be newsworthy. So in simple terms, the media tell us what to think about simply by the things that they put out as news. Whatever that is in the news, we're going to be thinking about it. It's going to be the basis for our conversations, okay? And there's actually a debate, an ongoing debate about whether issues become public interest because the media reported on it or the media reporting on a matter because it's of public interest. I think it's, it's a mix of both. Now, um, closely linked to this agenda setting, so I've said that because the media can set the agenda through any news they put out, they're able to, as it were, tell you what to think about. Now, agenda setting ends there, but then there's another theory that supports it called framing, which says that through framing, the media can actually provide a perspective or an angle on which an issue should be looked at. And by doing that, you are influencing the manner in which the topic is being discussed, the manner in which it's been um, thought about. And um, let's use your case study and, and the issue with care university. Um, I think that Joy so far, um, I've been listening, has given an equal platform to both parties to discuss it. But this morning on the Super Morning Show, I realized that they were bringing in other perspectives, other angles of looking at the issue. So um, I think 
there was somebody talking about the fact that this is about expanding opportunities for female students. Another person thinks that it's a, it's actually inimical to female students because they think that by mixing up one of the halls, making it a mixed hall, you are using women or the females to stop a bigger, to manage a bigger issue. So that's another perspective. And Claire, you can see that um, through this, organizations working with the media can actually guide how people or their publics, their stakeholders think about their products. So for example, if an organization is launching a new product, depending on your business or communication objectives, you might want to focus more attention on the users and benefits. And that is where your messaging will go. Or perhaps it's about price, maybe that's your key selling proposition. Or, or perhaps it's about the fact that this product is coming from a big brand with a very rich heritage. So with this in mind, a story is written to focus on what is important and consequently it guides the stakeholders' um, conversation around it. Um, an effective way of doing this sometimes is during a speech, when there's a speech at an event where there are media people to cover, the themes in it shape, at the end of the day, the stories that come out shape and guide um, stakeholder perceptions. Um, so again, that's a powerful way in which the media can help um, an organization to, as it were, shape public perception about it. Then also the media perform what is called a gatekeeping role. Now this gatekeeping function allows the editor or the news director to determine from a certain pool of stories that have been filed in by reporters, which ones actually get published. Okay, and the editor makes these choices based on what is deemed as newsworthy. And of course, sometimes there are a few other considerations. So in this case, it's important for PR managers to link organizational information to what is current or what is topical. Okay. Now, from the media's role as agenda setters and gatekeepers, we see that they are very influential. And depending on where you, you're coming from, an organization may see them as a partner and an opportunity and work with them, or sometimes you see organizations actually shying away from any interaction with the media. From a PR point of view, I would say um, choose the former, choose the media personnel and channels as an opportunity. And why do I say so? Um, traditional media has a lot of advantages. It still has a very high level of credibility. People trust what they read in the newspaper, what they see or what they hear on radio, what they see on television. And that's because we know that they are also guided by values of truth, objectivity and accuracy. Um, again, we realize these days that those who seek even online news would prefer news from established news sources such as Graphic Online, My Joy Online. And in this era of fake news, and we know fake news often happens on social media where there's no mediation, no control, um, the role of the editor as a gatekeeper, validating and confirming if that story is accurate comes into play, and you won't have that on social media. And then again, beside credibility, businesses want maximum exposure for their brands, and, tradi and, and traditional media still delivers that. Now let's look at these statistics. So. I was just engaging some of my media friends in, in Joy, and I learned that July, August, September this year, between 1.8 million and 2 million visitors were on my Joy Online. So you can just imagine if you have your new story on my Joy Online, just look at this large number of people who are being exposed to, to, to your brand. Um, it said that about 90% of Ghanaians listen to radio. Okay, and we're about 29 million. Um, so 90% is given us about 26 million thereabouts. And Joy FM is ranked among the top five radio stations in Ghana. So again, you can imagine the mileage and the impact you get. Um, let me give you one example even from print. Um, from print. So there are these geopoll rankings and they look at uh, media performance. And in 2017, they said um, for daily graphic alone, daily, you have one point. 519 million eyeballs reading the paper. And this is so because a newspaper is a shared item. So one newspaper, about two, three, four, or five, or even more people are reading it, okay? And, I, and mean, I, 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 I can't help being mischievous here. Mm -hmm. The number of eyeballs, are they? Is, are we supposed to divide that by two? <laughs> well, <laughs> even, mind, if, we even if you divide that <laughs> by two, I mean, you can see that that is massive. That's an awesome number of people. That's an awesome, yeah. that's an awesome number of people. So, again, um, with this in mind, it's important to work 
closely um, with, with, with the media personnel. Now, how do we get started? Okay, how do you work with the media in a manner that ensures that um, you, you, you're able to maximize that relationship? So media relations first starts with getting to know the media and understanding the media industry and then understanding how the industry can support your business. Now, there are journalists who report on different issues and topics and from different media. It's important to have a media contact list of reporters, of, of journalists, of, of, of editors, telephone numbers, email numbers, particularly to the newsroom, so that when you have an event or you have an issue of public interest, you can fall on this contact list to reach out to the media. And sometimes you might not know anyone well, write a letter to the editor. Um, they are likely to oblige and send someone to cover, cover your story, but thereafter, let's keep the contact. Um, some organizations also hold media um, forums, such as an editor's forum or a press soiree, to brief the media about their business, explain the nature of the operations to them, and in turn, the media get to explain how they can support um, that organization. Um, Another good way to work with the media, and we are looking at media relations, how an organization through their PR units built a relationship with the media, is to know how each medium operates, the kind of content that's suitable for each uh, medium, and then sometimes even deadlines for, for, for sending content to, to, to the media. For example, um, understanding how the channel works. Radio is audio-based or writes on voice. It's brief and relies on a lot of description to convey the message. And so when you want a story on radio, then you must be prepared to, to do an interview. You should be prepared for your voice to be recorded. You shouldn't expect a very lengthy um, story, but something that harps on the key points, okay? For example, a newspaper allows for more detail. And sometimes you see that in the newspaper, there's, one, there's a picture that's supporting the story. So once you know that, then you know that when you have a newspaper story, you can expect a more lengthy, a more detailed um, um, story. For example, TV is brief, but TV has the blessing of both voice and visual. So you can actually see the person, see the brand, see the action. Um, and bearing this in mind, it's important that PR people prep the executives or their spokespeople to engage with the media. Okay, and then also the media work with strict deadlines. So, for example, if an organization had an event that ended at 12 and you, you're hoping to make it for the business news at one, if you know deadlines, then you know that possibly the story might not, might not come up. Okay, then also you need to um, know how to organize the content for an editor. And when it comes to print, for example, some of the print houses, in fact, all of them have their own in house styles. And so sometimes when you know the in-house style, you're able to prepare the story or the news item in a way that is readily, um, readily usable. Okay. Now, for example, um, let's say you, you want a story to come in daily graphic. Uh, today's Wednesday, so we're looking at Friday. You should aim at having the story ready by Thursday. And even within media houses, they have... Um, they have meetings where they are looking at what is going to go in the news, what's not going to go in the news. And so it's important for PR people to know some of these things that help and build the relationship with, with the media. And that also helps the media then to carry news about the organization. The fact is that in Ghana, we're all sharing the same media. You know, we have the same few newspapers that we're all using. Elsewhere, you can have media that's just focused on education or health. But for us, you have one newspaper or one radio station or one television station. It's general news. There's a slot for business. There's a slot for health. There's a slot for this. So knowing some of these tips helps you to get your story across. And then it gives you the mileage um, that you need. Right, very, very, very great points there shared with us. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. And I'm here in the studio with AC Asuman Johnson, our favorite PR consultant. And we're discussing PR, publicity, I beg your pardon, publicity and media relations and how that affects your business. We'll be putting the phone lines out shortly so that you can also be a part of this discussion. If you have any comments, we'd like for you to send them to us on our WhatsApp number. That's 244 340 Four three seven. That's zero two four four three four zero four three seven. We'd like to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we continue with our discussion. The
master classes in session and you can interact with us via Facebook at Joy Business or at Joy 99.7 FM. And if you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM. Don't forget to hashtag masterclass. You can also send us a text on 1422 across all networks or join the WhatsApp conversation on 244 340437 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Right, welcome back to the show. This is Masterclass here on your Superstation. We want to be opening the phone lines shortly. The numbers to call are 0302 216 541. That's 0302 216 541. We want to hear your thoughts. Value Proposition Workshop, the RTHE Consult. The RTHE Consult is organizing a value proposition workshop tagged Winning Customer Advantage in a Changing Market. Your value proposition lets everyone know about the benefits that customers will get through their business. For many people, however, the value proposition has become stale or they do not have one at all. And after a while, the business starts to fail. This value proposition design workshop is about two things. Number one, developing value proposition to win the customers. Number two, planning big goals for 2019 with a better value proposition. You can join the workshop on November 13th to learn about developing a fresh and exciting value proposition to boost your business. For more information, you can call this number 0273-188-533. That's 0273-188-533. So that's what the number you can call for more information or also to register. By all means, you want to be a part of that workshop to learn how to put your business or position your business in a good place for 2019. Now, the numbers to call. The phone lines are open 0302216541. want you to pick up that phone. Give us a call on what your thoughts are on media relations and publicity, media relations and publicity. If you wish to send us a WhatsApp, you can also do that on 0244-340-437. Now, you see, you, you did mention something, you know, I just want to chip this in before you continue with the discussion on publicity, that as a PR person, you need to understand the different types of, of media or the, or the different channels, i.e. television, radio, newspapers, and all of that. If you chose newspapers, um, the person is not looking at you at the time you're talking, and it's in text. If you choose radio, they get to listen to your voice. So if you're smiling, they can tell in your voice. If you're not smiling, they can tell in your voice. We always say that when you pick up the phone, smile. Um, so, yes, question I want to ask, and you'll hold that answer for me because I've got a caller on the line. Mm. When you have a CEO who's facing the public or a PR person, who's addressing an issue that is clearly their fault, the fault of the business. And they're trying to present another story, trying to make it look good. Your body and your actions are saying one thing. Your voice is saying another thing. How do you manage that dichotomy? Hold that answer. I've got a caller on the line. Um, I'll pick that call. I've got Benji from Kolebu. Good afternoon, Benji. You're welcome to Masterclass. Do I have Benji on the line? Okay, I think I've lost Benji. The Benji, if you're listening, please call us back. We definitely want to hear your question. So the question I asked was, how do you manage it when your, your actions are saying one thing and your words are saying something else? I think um, prevention is better than cure, as we always say. And I think I've said this on this program. Um, a caller one time called about it. Media train your spokespersons. Mm. And, and again, go over the messaging. In PR, we have something called key messages. Because at the end of the day, you are communicating a certain standpoint and so before whoever goes on air to grant that interview go over the speaking points let's discuss even posture etc right. so that there's no disconnect in body language and in the context and the context i've got eric from us let's talk to eric good afternoon eric you're welcome to masterclass okay hello eric right i can't hear you eric if you can hear me please give us a call back we want to hear what it is that you have to say so yes, by all means, media train your people yes. and help so that when they go on air, they don't, they're not saying one thing and then, you and know. the body language is saying Because obviously thing. then I would think that if a company always chose, let's say, newspapers or radio, would that be an indication of um, trying to hide away from, trying to hide away from um, a situation where maybe they don't want their, their body to contact? communicate something else and the words you know to communicate no, another thing. No, these are all channels that are available um, depending on again what your communication strategy is and mm. so um, I wouldn't think that people would choose uh, print or radio to hide but think about it, TV always gives you, as I said, the double blessing. You can actually get to see the action, see the brand. So. Right, right. I think I've got Benji back on the line. Let's see if we can talk to Benji. Good afternoon, Benji. You're welcome to Masterclass. Hi, good afternoon. Right. Benji, talk to uh, me. Is it good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, can you help me uh, in terms of PR? What strategy would you adopt to improve a brand 
that is suffering from a uh, slow death. It's suffering from? Slow death. Slow death. Yes. I think the brand is not doing well. Mm. And, and as such, you need to improve in terms of uh, using PR as a strategy to, to, to improve the brand. All right. Benji, thank you so much. Please keep listening. We'll try and answer that question. Well, I suppose he's, he's managing a brand or he knows someone who's managing a brand that's not doing too well. And he wants to know how PR can help revive the brand. Yes. Um, first and foremost, let's gather information. Why is it suffering? So engage your, your customers, um, former customers, pros prospective customers. Um, from your own point of view as the business, why do you think it's suffering? Um, we always draw a strategy from the information that we have. And then based on that, we will know um, wh whether we need to perhaps be sending text messages um, to our customers. What do we need to do? Everything starts with, with the information that we have. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'll say. And once we have that information, and we also know the media habits of, of our customers, our potential customers, then we know how to um, communicate whatever strategy it is to them for it to be effective. But anyway, he can also call after the program and after we can have a more um, detailed conversation. By all means. I've got Eric back on my line. Let's talk to Eric. Good afternoon, Eric. Thank you for calling back. You're welcome to Masterclass. Good afternoon. Yes, talk to me, Eric. Hello. Yes, Eric, go ahead. I can hear you. Please talk to me. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Okay, I've lost Eric back there. We, we want to hear what you have to say, Eric, so please give us another call back. But you're going to talk to us about publicity also. Yes. So can we just quickly start that discussion yes. while so, we wait for um, So before the break, I kept saying your story, your article in the media. Now, that is the output of media relations, publicity. And publicity refers to a story or an article or a feature that is published in the newspaper or online. It refers to a story aired on radio, a story you see on TV, or an interview. So... Simply put, publicity is information or news about an organization in the media, and it could be traditional media or social media. And here, you know, in Ghana, we tend to say, let's create or produce some publicity materials for our event. Often people are referring to posters, flyers, a banner. Those are, public, those are not publicity materials. Those are promotional materials. And so we are making that correction. Publicity is actually news or information about your organization. And in that regard, an organization can by itself generate its own publicity. So you have an event and you invite the media to cover or you write a story about it and you share it with the media. Then also the media themselves can create news about you because something is happening that concerns um, your organization that is of public interest. And then, of course, any other person, it could be a stakeholder or someone totally unrelated to you, can generate news about the organization. So where it comes to publicity, it doesn't necessarily have to be you generating it. It's nope. once it's happening and it's interesting and it's once sensational. It's happening, it's interesting. You are either going to put it out there or, or someone someone is gonna... will put it out there. And because right. of that, we you can easily get bad publicity. Hmm. Because left to an organization alone, you would always ensure that the news out there, the information out there about you is positive. But when anyone else can put up news about you, then you can have a case for bad publicity. Ironically, though, I know when you think of negative publicity, you think that it's going to affect negatively. But let's look at the issue with Shatawale and Sakodir. Right. Now, there was an issue between the two of them, and it was somewhat negative. However, that negative publicity inspired Shatter's fans to give him massive support. And I hear that his album launch was very successful. So here you it was see... sold out, actually. Exactly. So here you see how negative publicity is working for, 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 for him. Um, another example, I think Tiwa Savage a while back mm. had some marital issues. Yeah. Um, and her husband, I think, out of a tweet, people were bashing her. But the spin-off effect was that well, her followership soared because now people are going, they want to see who this Tiwa Savage is and all that. Even the famous movie, um, The Passion of the Christ, mm -hmm. it hit box office because of all the negative publicity from protests from other religious groups, okay? But that is a rare case. For a business, the fact remains that bad publicity is always mm. um, bad for business. Right. So then would you, would you recommend for business to sort of put an arrangement in place where they sort of safeguard themselves against or, or help to manage bad publicity? I say this because, for example, when we're talking about social media, you know, um, Walla told us that some companies have people on social media who are there all the time watching what the news is. And if it's detrimental to the business, they quickly come in and mediate. 
yeah. or give information that's helpful. And, he, and he's very right. In fact, even for social media and traditional media as well, you have to monitor the media for whatever news that is going on about you. If you're a small business, you can scan the newspapers daily to see what they're saying about you. You can use family and friends. If someone heard anything about your business anywhere in the news, they can alert you. Um, if you're a bigger organization, um, there are tools that actually monitor the media. You know, we have so many media channels, it's quite dispersed, so there are tools to do that. But a simple Google alert, you can set up a Google alert for your company and so that whenever something goes off about you on online, you get to know whether it's positive or it's negative. And it's, if it's negative, then you can have a plan to actually... That's um, actually very it. interesting, a Google alert. Free yes. advice and you head it Free here advice set up on Masterclass. Yes. <laughs> I've got Meg from East Legon on social media. Meg says, how will you handle a PR relationship beyond the official level? Um, I'm trying to understand the question. I suppose there's a lot mm -hmm. Me Meg is not telling us, but... Um, I, we can assume and well, say that well, it's yeah, it's it's probably when when business get mixed up with personal stuff. Again, you're dealing with people, and it's about relationship. And if you would recall what we said about how do you deepen or the relationship between you and your customer, we said get to know your customer's birthday, and then when it's the customer's birthday send a message you can even send a cake now that is going personal it's beyond official right and so um it's about what works for the relationship but guided by honesty transparency and respect right right i think i've got eric from osu back on the line let's talk to eric good afternoon eric you're welcome to masterclass good afternoon talk to me eric yes please i want to know uh who should we believe PR or maybe uh, the client, because look at the KNUSD uh, issue, for instance. Uh, the public relations officer came out the first time to say that uh, it's because of the missed hall. That's why they are uh, demonstrating. But it's then too we're saying that it's not because of the missed hall, it's because uh, of uh, the unfair treatment being channeled to them. So we don't know who to believe, like, should we believe the PR or the student? So please, I, I want Madam to, I mean, clarify things for me. Okay, so um, please keep listening, we'll try and answer that question. You see, I think I can help you. Help um, first okay. of all, Eric, each of the, the interested groups will have a representation of some sort. So maybe your question should be, what is the student rep saying? Student rep here is the SRC. The SRC are saying that it is as a result of student abuse. The PR of the university, which is the other party, is also saying it's as a result of the mixed halls. So the two different PRs represent the different parties involved. So maybe your question should be, which of the two parties should we believe? I believe that's part of the conflict resolution process. But Isi, you are the professional here. I think you've said it right. It's part of the conflict resolution process. And I think it, the whole situation is unfolding. And now we have other third parties which are coming in to sit in. And when everything has been discussed, we will know what it is, what the real issue is. So... Um, what yeah. is the caller's name? He should keep Eric. listening and with time we'll know. But you know, I'm, I'm just going to sort of re retreat something that Daniel said in the morning on the, on the, on the, on the morning show. Mm -hmm. That in all of this, you know, we're all very sentimental about this issue because almost all of us have come through these universities at one point or the other. But let cool heads prevail. You know, because everybody is sort of entrenched about the position. And if we start that discussion here, we'll be talking about something else. But let cool heads prevail. And, and we, we are going to get to the end of this. Yes. yes. And, and, and this goes back to the whole conversation about mm. stakeholder engagement. Mm, mm. So um, whatever the issue is, whether it has to do with the decision to convert a hall to a mixed hall or whether it was about security brutality of students, it goes back to dialogue and having a conversation with the affected stakeholders. And I think they are going to do that and hopefully we'll have some resolution. Some resolution. Yeah. I've got Fifi from Ring Road, Ring Road Central. He says, how does Google Alert work? So... Um, it would be difficult for me to actually show you, but you can go on YouTube and just type in um, how to set up a Google Alert and you'll see how it's done. Okay. YouTube helps us to do a lot of things yes. these days. This one is from Geoffrey. Um, Geoffrey says, I want to know whether the style of writing new release to the traditional media is the same as writing to online media as a PR person. Well, not much, really. The thing with... Um, traditional media and if you're looking at print for example sometimes there are word limitations 
okay there are word limitations but online you have you have the advantage of space and you can go on and on for a while so but at the end of the day um the pointers for a good story always what is happening why where who said what all those things apply right and then also get to know if there's a particular style there's a particular way in which that particular media writes a stories get to know it and then prepare the story in that format for them Right, I think I've got time for one more phone call. Numbers to call 0302-216-541. By all means, pick up that phone and give us a call. We want to hear what you have to say so that our discussion can be helpful to some of us who are listening. So, Isi, you want to give us final thoughts on publicity? Well, um, I think I said some, I've said something about bad publicity, but let's right. look at some of the ways in which you can generate good publicity. I mean, here we are. I am, I am, I am on this program promoting public relations and by extension promoting um, mahogany consult there are so many radio programs tv programs that are looking for a resource person to speak about an issue and so get you use your media relation contact and get your experts on radio on tv even in the newspaper offering expert advice also when you have an event don't hide the event um, share the story about that event in, in 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 the media and by that way you're also shaping um, opinion and and public perception about you and also sometimes when media houses call for organizations to join them for sports or for example joy is the soup kitchen join in you will earn free publicity from 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 the media house right we will be taking your final um takeout for today but before we do that let me ask this question in an in you know in an event where there's an incident that's being reported newsmen or journalists will look for news that sells I mean, I, I think that the history of the word news itself is the fact that it's new. So a collection of new things becomes news. <laughs> okay. Now, they, they're looking for, th because earlier on in the show, before we came on, you were talking about the fact that some editors may choose not to run a certain story because at that point in time, it doesn't align to their vision or to the, to, to the work that they're doing. And they may choose to run it at another time. The news person wants to run a story that's sensational. Your story is sensational. And they want to run it anyway. You wouldn't have gone out to them because you're managing a crisis. Now, the PR person wants to manage the crisis so their presentation of what the crisis is will not be as sensational as the journalist wants it how should that you know that dichotomy be managed so again so for example we say that the thing has collapsed and three people are dead the pr person wants to say we've had an incident and it's 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 a big incident and we're still looking into it we will come back to you with some more information. Because the PR person is looking at a relationship point of view. You don't want to alarm your stakeholders. The journalist wants to your, sell newspapers. Your, your, employers, your employers, your customers. And so you, you want to, as I said, use an euphemism to, to water down the, the intensity of it. Um, and sometimes that comes up, that's one of the conflict areas between PR people versus media because, again, the media have their own agenda. They need to sell, like you're saying. And so sometimes it brings up about conflict but when you have a good relationship you can manage it and there are times when the media go overboard but they come back and, and, and they can correct it so it's actually a dialogue between the media person and the PR uh, uh, person in charge okay so time check in the studio 57 minutes past the hour of one we're rounding up our show now what's the takeout for today and what should we look for in the next discussion? So I will say that publicity is essential for your business. As we've seen, um, even if you don't generate it, someone would generate it. So partner the media to create positive publicity for your business and to create a good image for your business as well. And leverage all media channels available, both traditional and social media, to gain a maximum reach for your organization's activities. So in our next discussion, what, what should we be looking so forward to? So we're going to? to look at issues and crisis. I think that's been on the heart of a lot of people. We're going to look at how PR helps um, to manage an issue and a crisis. Issues and crisis. Yes. That will definitely be an exciting one. We're going to share some do's and don'ts for today. Definitely, um, we've been talking about PR for the last couple of weeks. One of the do's for today is that by all means, work on your company's message. And I think that AC has been talking about that, you know, um, repeatedly. Work on your company's message. Don't wait until something happens and then you want to go out there and call some good. Work on your company's message. And the second don't is that, I mean, the second issue which is a don't is that do not assume that the media will write about you. Do not assume that the media will write about you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Next week, we continue our discussion on on issues and AC you mentioned issues crisis and, and management. crisis management yes. do make a date with us my name is Yabanaf up next is the news at 2 thank you for listening see you same time next week